and uh, the argument about how men um, has to work till death becomes questionable, debatable. Hello everyone, uh, this is Ronan Blue, just taking my uh, daily walk here today. And today's topic would be on um, why men need to work till death. So this topic was actually inspired by um, a comment that I got for one of my vlogs called uh, um, Why Work Till Death. And basically within that vlog, I talk about how society um, actually draws out our life's path for everybody on what it believes would lead us all to towards happiness. And that would be by, um, well, first off being born and going through the socialist educational system and then uh, going to higher education and getting a university degree or um, going to college for some specialty. And then uh, getting that corporate job, working at nine to five and, uh, you know, growing your your status within work and then eventually finding a partner so you can uh, work towards uh, getting that big home and uh, uh, those two cars and uh, uh, the two children so maybe within that video I kind of offended him um, to a certain degree but um, if you look at the majority of um, you know the households in North America it's kind of structured that way, you know, and everyone kind of believing that that's the path that leads to, you know, ultimate happiness. And it does lead to happiness for a lot of people, but for a lot of other people, it isn't the lifestyle that they want to follow. And the people who do follow that lifestyle sometimes don't end up being very happy in the end of it all. So that was basically my point, but he brought up that men um, in this society are expected to work and to work till death and without having to do so they would uh, lose their respect from society and the only way that men could be accepted accepted in society uh, would be to basically work till death and to to uh, provide for that family structure and I totally understand that but uh, you know I understood his perspective no doubt in my mind that um, men are expected to work but he also uh, kind of forgot one crucial point in that our society is changing it's evolving and he also forgot about um, the other half of our uh, population the female population uh, which have been given um, opportunities uh, since the 1950s and 1960s uh, women's movement. So women are now um, equal to be able to find the jobs and careers that are, they're in interested in elevating themselves in. So they also become the providers and that's why um, the concept of uh, dual income has come into play. So we share that world together now um, where both parties in the household uh, works towards the security of the household and both parties are providers. A large percentage of the population today are uh, common-in-law. You know, they choose not to marry, but they choose to live in the same household. Uh, a large percentage are chose that lifestyle. And not only that, but um, the concept of uh, dinks, uh, dual income, no kids, has become very uh, part of our culture as well, where couples choose not to have children and they both have the careers that they follow. And uh, that's why it's called uh, dual income. So that's how our whole society is sort of um, evolving into. And uh, the argument about how men um, has to work till death becomes questionable, debatable, um, because it's no longer 100% true. I mean, back in the day, you know, it only required like one male to 
to provide for the entire household, right? Having a house, having those kids, and uh, buying the materialism used to be the case back in the 1950s and 1960s. You know, the wife was uh, a housewife and that was what life was like um, for pretty much every country in the world. I mean, some countries are still within that, that realm where only uh, the husband works. But uh, in North America, it's very much changing, as you all know. But of course, uh, we still have those stereotypes in the workplace um, between the gender roles of the male and the female. Uh, the male is supposed to be uh, more or less in a leadership role and uh, men are expected to uh, be sympathetic um, and men are expected to be kind of the nice guy in the workplace to make sure that everyone um, works in the work environment um, comfortably so we still have those certain gender stereotypes within the, the workplace where women sometimes don't get that that equality I guess you can say to men see men um, for example they can't cry at work I'm not saying that women cry at work but I'm just saying if a man does happen to cry at work then they get uh, less credibility right you're not supposed to be showing any kinds of emotion right you're supposed to be um, that stereotypical male figure in the workplace where you're supposed to be strong, emotionless, and to have uh, a direction that's equal to uh, the corporate goals. So you can uh, grow that balance sheet and uh, raise that uh, stock price for the company. So it's very much a, a corporate militant uh, environment. And we still live in that kind of society within the workplace, but women are actually, you know, in that uh, environment as well. And uh, they have their own uh, particular stereotypes that they have to deal with as well. So that's another argument that I want to bring up in that uh, men, not only men are pressured, have this pressure <coughs> of uh, expecting to work forever. But uh, I've actually read studies where it showed that um, in certain occupations, men still get paid more than women. Um, but then of course there are a few uh, female dominant, dominated industries where the women uh, get paid more than the men. But uh, interesting enough, the facts actually show that 16% um, of females are hired a higher percentage of females are hired um, than males. Interesting enough. And they actually found that females um, are more detail oriented in the workplace and uh, they're a lot more thorough with um, their responsibilities at work compared to men. So women are gaining a, a lot of respect in the workplace. And uh, in, because of that change of uh, that generational change compared to the 1950s and we're looking at a lot of women who are becoming financially independent. So I guess the comment, the guy who commented on that vlog also mentioned that one of the major reasons why that uh, men and women get divorced is because of uh, unemployment. It's, it's debatable. Um, I don't think it's 100% of the reason why divorce happens. I think a larger part would be because women have that independence now compared to uh, the 1950s and 1960s because they have their own careers that they follow, their own pursuits, their own income where they become uh, financially um, more secure than previous generations to have more options. So that's what makes a difference today. Um, and I think uh, the person who commented may be of an older generation. Um, 
and maybe I, I see things from a different perspective. So uh, in today's day and age, uh, I don't believe that um, men are expected to work till death. And I don't believe that uh, we, men are accepted because of their the titles that they have um, at their job place, right? There's a number of different variables to this. And uh, in terms of uh, social circles, uh, he also mentioned that um, the social circles that we make would be with our um, the people we work with, right? And that could be true as well. I mean, but then after that job ends, I highly doubt that uh, you would be hanging out with the majority of your coworkers, right? They have their own lives to live, and the only place you really met up with uh, your coworkers was directly at work. Because uh, since I hit financial independence uh, about four years ago now, close to four years ago, you know, right that next day, all those people I saw at the coffee machine every morning, uh, the majority of them, I never see them at all, uh, of, of course, right? Uh, some of them I still do hang out with, just those few people. Um, but the majority of them, you'll never see them again, even if you were friends with them during, in a workplace. So I believe it does affect uh, the male social circles uh, when you do um, decide to uh, quit your job or become, uh, you know, get laid off. But changing the uh, topic a little bit in terms of a financial independence, um, for those... Uh, because uh, both the male and female are, are able to work today, it's very much a reality that uh, financial independence could be achieved. And uh, it could be achieved for whatever background you're in, whether or not you have, uh, you're married or you're single, you have children or uh, really any uh, category you can pretty much achieve financial independence if you work together as a team. And uh, we're actually examples of that. You know, we chose this lifestyle here in freedom and becoming time rich out of the traditional job setting. And we're living a lifestyle where those stereotypes are thrown out the window of how a male is supposed to, to act or how a female is supposed to act. In our lifestyle today, both of us are free to do what we want to um, outside of those stereotypes. And it's, it's a great feeling actually, because I know I'm not expected to work till death. And she knows as well that she's not expected to work till death either. So we're free to do what we want to outside of society. And uh, you only live once, really. And being outside of those expectations is uh, it's a great feeling. And yeah, like I said, it's very much possible, even if you have children, to achieve financial independence. There's so much evidence of that within the FIRE community. Uh, financially independent retire early. And uh, people who decide to retire early um, to be with their children. I mean, that's a great goal, right? And uh, wanting to be with your children and to homeschool them. It's a lot of individuals like that. And uh, good for them to uh, kind of go against uh, certain expectations that society has on people. But I think I have my vlog here today. Uh, tell me what you think of um, how men are expected to work till death in the comment section below. Um, you know, it wasn't really fair for the commenter um, just because he's not here to... Well, maybe if he watches this vlog, uh, he can comment. Um, but I mean, I, like I said, I do understand his perspective. But I also have my um, perspective as well and experiences that it's not all about how the man is uh, 
really seen as the sole provider of the family. And it's actually a shared, very much a shared responsibility in today's day and age. And, uh, you know, men have a lot more options nowadays. And thinking outside of the stereotype is, is tough for a lot of people. But uh, there, there are options out there in the non-traditional. Um, but anyways, uh, if you like this vlog, please don't forget to give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell for more of my coming content here. Thank you for watching my vlog. Be free, gain wealth, and travel far.